this is the way some businesses still operate with adding machines, accountant pads, fine point pencils and typewriters. But more and more businesses are turning to computers and business software. Are you ready to computerize? We'll help you find out today as we take a look at the latest in business software on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by grants from AFIPS, the American Federation of Information Processing Societies, a nonprofit federation of 11 national societies for computer professionals. AFIPS, leadership and service in computer and information technology. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover the latest in microcomputer technology worldwide. Byte the international standard. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, what we have up on the AT here is something called HAL from GNP. It's a Lotus 123 enhancement. It's kind of interesting. You can see my problem. I did my totals, and my column width wasn't wide enough. Normally, I'd have to go back to my worksheet menu and then column width, range, all these things. The problem is I want to make column E wider. With this program, I can simply say make column E wider, and it does it. Now, this is a very interesting example of some of the new kinds of business software which are out, but really it seems the world of business software hasn't changed very much since Lotus 1, 2, 3. And have you software guys just run out of <laughs> ideas in the business world? Well, Stuart, truly generic software like word processors, spreadsheets, uh, database products are very difficult to come up with. And of course, uh, the market's gotten much larger, so software developers can concentrate on specialty areas like law and medicine. Now, while we're trying to come up with those truly generic products, we can also just put frosting on the existing ones. <laughs> well, we'll look at some of the basics today, from word processors to spreadsheets to database managers. All of these have changed the way people do business, and we're going to begin with a real-world example of those changes. About 30 miles south of San Francisco is the Obister Winery, a small family-run business producing about 10,000 cases of wine per year. Winemaking is an uncommon blend of artistry, craft, and science. But it is also a business that demands a lot of tedious bookkeeping to keep track of customer orders, a perishable stock, and several layers of excise taxes. To help run their successful business, the owners have just one full-time employee and one computer. For the Obisters, buying the computer was a major decision. While many aspects of winemaking benefit from new, labor-saving technology, computer programs for the production side are expensive luxuries for a small business. Instead, the owners concentrated on computerizing the most tedious office jobs automating the accounts receivable, accounts payable, inventory and mailing list has resulted in one less employee and much less time spent in the office. On the other hand, to be able to make a smooth transition from old to new accounting systems didn't come cheaply. The customized software cost $8,000 and the hardware another $8,000. Too small for corporate software, too specialized for CAN software, this company has managed to integrate computers in the practical way, automating just those parts of the business that don't require the human touch. Joining us now is Louis Levin, product manager for WordStar 2000 at MicroPro, and Dr. Alan Ashton, co-founder and vice president of Satellite Software, makers of WordPerfect. Gary? Alan, uh, WordPerfect is a relative newcomer compared to WordStar. What features really make it great? We've had really good success with WordPerfect 4.0, and this uh, last month we've come out with a new version 4.1, where we've added to our automatic table of contents and automatic uh, index generation and to the math and to the columns capability and uh, dictionary capability some new exciting features. Mm -hmm. For instance, there is a thesaurus that's been added. You can automatically press a key on a word and look up the meanings for that word. There's the capability of going up to a shell environment and getting down into a calculator, getting into a math plan, which is a spreadsheet uh, product, bringing in a graph right into WordPerfect, doing automatic line drawing, and a uh, number of other exciting features uh, that we have. Okay, we'll get a chance to see those in a few minutes. Lewis, 
WordStar has been with us for some time. Uh, what's new with WordStar? Well, WordStar is going strong for its community of technically oriented users. Mm -hmm. I'd like to tell you about release two of WordStar 2000, which is really designed for a corporate and professional office environment and has features okay. that adapt it for that kind of environment, Still including good. DCA conversion. And what I'm going to show you right now, a way of incorporating Lotus spreadsheets directly without any kind of conversion. I just use the block insert command like I would for a text file. And what I'll see are the ranges of the spreadsheet that I can pick. And I don't need to read in the whole spreadsheet. I probably don't want the whole mm -hmm. spreadsheet. I've picked a specific range. When we look at the document, we'll see that. There we are. So you just pulled up a WKS file. I pulled up a raw WKS file. And one thing I'm going to do is pull up a list of some of the features. And since I don't have to type that, I'll just point to the file, features.2. And we'll put that in. And this will be a list of some of the new capabilities okay. in the product. And they are? Well, in reverse order. <laughs> They are improved performance. We've made the product faster. Footnotes at the bottom of the page, a document history screen, which serves as an audit trail for a document, uh, newspaper style columns to print things in multiple columns. And so it also looks like a feature for doing some sorting here, too. That's right. I'm just going <laughs> to sort those, and now I've put them in the correct order. Uh, there's some other capabilities that make the product more convenient, like a quicker installation, simplified installation, and really outstanding support for laser okay. printing. Lewis, uh, you can exit from WordStar, and we'll turn we'll the keyboard over to Alan. Let right. him get started. Uh, one of the things you have here as a new feature is this connection to Lotus. Just how important is it uh, for WordStar to be, let's say, in, in the business market? The standard to issue PC in a corporation has 512K and Lotus 123. <laughs> That's the environment in which we see word processing fitting in the corporation. Many managers and analysts are users of word processors, not just secretaries and administrative people. Mm -hmm. Now, so the whole idea then is to make this an integrated approach to... An integrated approach because of the way it fits in with the natural pattern of work that people in corporations okay. have shown us. Alan, looks like you've got this thing uh, up and rolling here. What are, you, what are you up to? I'm showing the spell uh, utility. In this case, it uh, finds the first word that's misspelled, which is spelling, mm -hmm. and then gives uh, suggested uh, spelling. Notice that if uh, the L were a, U, a W instead, it would be spewing. In this case, it should be spelling. So I type the A, and it automatically replaces the word and changes to the correct spelling. Okay. It also gives a word count of the number of words in the document. It's very nice for uh, uh, writers. In this, uh, What about your thesaurus? The thesaurus, let me show you the thesaurus. Uh, if I look for the word uh, simply, that's down at the bottom here, and uh, go into thesaurus, we can automatically look up uh, meanings for the word simple. Notice that they're categorized in different meanings. It might be easy or elementary or modest or plain. So there's a, a great deal of work that's been put in. If I want to look up further uh, words for on innocent, if I hit just the I, then it shows me innocent. If I want to look up uh, pure, I look up... Uh, you can keep on going deeper into uh, that. Th that's right. And how many words, basically, are you dealing with in this uh, uh, source? We're dealing with... Uh, uh, maybe uh, at 100,000 by the time you, you get all okay. of the, the, mm -hmm. the words that you can uh, link together and the associations that you can make. I've just substituted easy for, simpl uh, for simply. Now we can just uh, rewrite the, uh, uh, the, the text on the screen. Okay. We also now, have the capability of uh, multiple columns on screen mm -hmm. so that you can be editing in one column and not affect the, the right. side by side columns. Now one of the things also that uh, you have with, it, with you is an example of the it's like laser printer output from uh, right. WordStar and from WordPerfect. The real glory of laser printing is the ability to change fonts throughout the document. And with WordStar 2000, our objective was to make it possible for someone who knew nothing about fonts or typography to use those really sexy capabilities. So we give on-screen cues by always keeping things right justified on screen, measuring tabs in inches so that if I say half an inch, I can switch proportional fonts on a line and get perfect output without any trial and error. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, where perfect can do. We've had some real success with uh, laser printers and using the capabilities such as highlighting and shading. Uh, this shows the automatic uh, uh, table of contents and outlining that we have. And also line draw, we can uh, bring in a, a spreadsheet example from Lotus and do the conversion as well and then automatically have the graph imported into WordPerfect mm -hmm. and then print the, the graph Looks like out. you also can handle formulas and special characters and that sort. That's right. Gentlemen, mm -hmm. thank you very much for that brief introduction. We're going to turn from word processors to the newest in spreadsheets. Matter of fact, it's so new they don't like to call it a spreadsheet, so stay with us.
With us now is Stan Kugel, president and co-founder of Javelin Software based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Stan, I was joking a bit before about a spreadsheet and Javelin not uh, being a spreadsheet. How is it different from a spreadsheet? Well, Javelin is quite simply the best business analysis software available. It's for anyone who uses a spreadsheet but is tired of the frustrations of the computerese required to get a spreadsheet to work. Javelin addresses three principal shortcomings that we've identified with computer spreadsheets. Spreadsheet users have difficulty understanding the logic and assumptions behind a spreadsheet analysis. A number may pop out on the screen, say 467. How do you know where that number came from, whether it's right, whether the assumptions behind it are correct? Okay, In addition, how does Javelin address those problems? Javelin is based on an entirely different paradigm than a spreadsheet. This is a tangible illustration of how Javelin is organized. It has 10 different views. One of those views is very similar to a spreadsheet. But more importantly than that, these other views allow you to look behind a spreadsheet analysis and ask the question, where did that number come from? Are the assumptions correct? Did the analyst use the correct logic in forming the analysis? Okay, could you show us on the program then? Mm -hmm. Sure. On the screen, you see here a model I built earlier today. It's for DeSoto Automobile Company. I've shown a projection in the lower window of DeSoto's operating income. This is a graph. And in the upper window, I've shown one of Javelin's 10 views, the diagram view. If I present to you these operating income projections, you may very well ask, Where is that correct? From? Can I really have confidence in that result? If you ask that question, I'll refer you to this diagram here that will show DeSoto operating income is derived from total sales and total costs, at least according to my model. If you have faith in those assumptions, then you may ask to see what were the total sales or what were the total costs. I think you can also go back now, can you discover what the basis of total sales were? Yes, you okay. may. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, if we want to see total sales, we can see the total sales is composed of car sales mm -hmm. okay. and truck sales. Now seeing the car sales data here, you may very well sit, ask me if this is really valid. You, you may think that the growth rate is going to be somewhat slower. So using only the cursor keys, you can adjust this data and see what effect that mm -hmm. will have on operating Let's income. Let's propagate that down to the final result. And... Yes, it, it does. Up here, you can see something that no spreadsheet can show you, where total sales was derived from mm -hmm. and where in the model it's used. This allows you to communicate much more effectively to others how your analysis was done and, and whether the assumptions are correct. Next thing I'd like to show you is the ability to change the data using what we call a quick graph. Here is a graphic representation of car sales as entered. If this looks like an unrealistic projection, we can use the arrow keys to adjust this. And then, as soon as we make those adjustments, you can see they're reflected here and in all of the other 10 views in Javelin. Here are the 10 views. The worksheet view allows us to show, for example, DeSoto income by month. And here it is. If I synchronize the graph to it, as I select, for example, truck sales, truck sales appears in the graph below. Here's total sales. And here's car costs. Okay. Looks Finally, if I uh, yeah, want to... Stan, we're going to have to move along. That is, that is very impressive. One mm -hmm. of the most difficult problems business users have is what kind of software to buy. So we went out and asked a business computer consultant, and Wendy Woods got the report. There are thousands of business software products on the market, and no end of reviews in magazines vying to tell you which ones are the best. For the average executive, this translates into a nightmare. Enter a new kind of doctor, the consultant. Charles Bornheim spent 18 years in the data processing field and has watched people make a lot of mistakes. There's lots of pitfalls. I mean, uh, there's, it's a very complicated process. There's lots of details to be aware of, and there's many places to go wrong, spend money, waste money, lose money, etc. Um, some people do it themselves and they do just fine, but that's a minority of people. Good consultants provide the technical, business, and even programming knowledge data processing executives need to make the right choices about software and hardware. Consulting is a booming field, and because it's growing so fast and unregulated, executives must also choose their consultants with care. There's a number of people who aren't consultants at all, who are calling themselves consultants, and in general, the public does not, is not able to discern the real consultants from the imposters. 
Some of the imposters, says Bornheim, include salesmen out to make commissions, or people new to the business out to make a fast buck. In terms of advice about choosing a consultant, Chick Bornheim recommends that you get references, especially about a consultant's jobs that were similar to yours. Or call the Independent Computer Consultants Association at 1-800-GET-ICCA. It could be your guide through the jungle. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. We're going to talk about database managers and filers now, and here to help us are Steve Dow, president and CEO of Ansys Software, and Jim Button, president and founder of Buttonware. Gary? Jim, um, we've seen some hot new products in word processing and uh, spreadsheets. What's new in the database business? Well, with, uh, with our new product, PC File R, a relational database, we've integrated a word processor and a mail merge capability, and that's the main feature of the new product. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and, uh, Steve, we have a you have a product called Paradox. Uh, what's new with Paradox? Can you show us what's going on there? Sure. In fact, we can even do it perhaps uh, easiest uh, with the demo. Let's Great. do it. Uh -huh. uh, a couple things that we've tried to do is to make it as familiar as possible for people to use, and that's why we've gone to the Lotus style menu so it's very easy to navigate mm -hmm. through. And I think we'll go in immediately and talk about asking questions or, or querying uh, your data. And it's very easy. You select Ask. And what we've done is made an enhancement on IBM's Query by Example and we can bring up a query form and you use this query form to specify what it is you're interested in. What kind of database is this we're working with, Steve? Uh, any kind of data. A database is, is to some people maybe a customer list, to other people I mean an airline reservation system is a very okay. complex database so it really depends on what you want but it's broad enough to be used by literally anyone. And we can literally check off the columns of information that we want to see, hit a key to ask for the answer to our query and we've gotten a, an answer, which is we just want to see the first three columns. But people never get it quite right the first time, so we make it very easy to go back up and say, for example, say I want to specify only those orders that are greater than 20. And again, it's very quick. You can change your mind. And to show you that it's relational, we can go back and say I want a query form, say, for our clients list, because I want to see the address of these people. And it's another query form. This is a very large 13,000 record table. And all we do is tell Paradox that uh, to give an example of a name connected into the column that has the same information in the other table and without specifying exactly how to, how to go about doing it, Paradox figures that for you and in about four or five seconds brings you mm -hmm. back an answer and tells you what city they're in. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Steve, is, uh, if you could uh, sure. quit the program, we'll turn the keyboard over to Jim to start his up. Uh, one of the uh, criticisms of a relational system is, uh, has been in the past, at least, that it's difficult for an average user to put together the relations. Right. Have you added tools to, the, to make that easier? Well, we've made it very flexible because pro the, the problem is inflexibility. Once you establish your table, it's very hard to go back and change your mind, add columns, delete mm -hmm. columns, restructure the data. And we, we do that very easily and without any penalties. Okay, uh, great. Jim, you've got PC file R up here. Tell us what this does and what's new about it. Well, I'll show you, just, just to have time to show you the new feature, one of the new features of PC file R, which is the integrated uh, letter writing capability. Let's say that I wish to send a custom tailored um, letter to each of the customers in my database. I can select the letter writing function, and PC file R will take me into an integrated letter writing program. Now, in this letter that's on the screen, I've written a small letter to uh, a customer. And within the letter, I've embedded commands showing what pieces of data to place at which spots in the letter. Um, upon completion of the uh, written letter, I can then go back into uh, PC file R and create uh, the letter on my printer. Okay, and the information that's actually included in the letter then is, uh, has been brought up as part of the, of the request? Yes, I can pull uh, selected records, selecting on up to 10 different search criteria. Uh, for uh, determining which uh, customers in the database to send the letter to. And as a matter of fact, as each letter is about to be printed, there will be one final pause on the screen showing me the customer and asking yes or no, would you like to send this one? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's, uh, what's in the future? What are we going to see as far as the next uh, versions of data new database systems? Well, as far as uh, our product is concerned, we'll continue to enhance it in terms of capacity, speed. Uh, we're looking at uh, uh, 
networking version mm -hmm. of PC File R in the very near future. Okay. Steve, how about uh, the integration with, uh, again, we've seen the integration of word processors with uh, spreadsheets. Is this important to be able to talk to a spreadsheet? To we think it's very important to communicate. In fact, we have built-in export and import capability with uh, a variety of formats for other databases, mm -hmm. spreadsheets, as well as word processors. But uh, the reality of living in a 640K environment in the DOS world means that uh, there's a limit to how much you can put it all in the same package. Mm -hmm. Steve, uh, we've, we've heard a lot about the name paradox and, right. and why you're calling that product paradox. Give us a little bit more background about how it's, it's different from the previous database manager. Well, the key difference is that, that most, uh, especially the high end of the database market, required you to be a programmer. You told uh, your database uh, in very explicit steps how to go about doing something. So you had to decide both what it is you want as well as how to go about doing it. With Paradox, we've minimized the how-to. In fact, you focus on what it is you want, giving an, an example of what you'd like, and Paradox figures out how best to go about doing it, so you don't have to know quite as much to get... So you, you kind of have stuff. an AI aspect in there? Yeah, we, we try not to hype it too much, but we use uh, what's referred to as machine reasoning uh, technology and algorithms to actually synthesize internally a program, and then we actually optimize the program dynamically. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm sorry, I wanted to, wanted to ask just a, a little more question, a few questions about the, the relational model again. Sure. Is this uh, sort of taking over the industry as far, is that the way that, that uh, database systems are being built now as a relational model or are there alternatives to that? Well, there's certainly alternatives, you know, hierarchical and, and mm -hmm. other kinds, but uh, the relational has a lot of advantages in terms of flexibility. Um, uh, unfortunately, relational is also one of sort of coming on like AI is, a, is an abused term. Uh -huh. Not everything okay. that says it's relational is relational. Uh -huh. okay. Jim, you were involved with, with freeware, uh, and this whole issue of, of the price of business software is still, is still an issue. Well, what do you think about that? I mean, you've been in the, in the lower cost end of this stuff, and some of these other products are still pretty high up there. Uh, are we going to see business software prices come down? Well, I think that it's, uh, it's probably inevitable that, that uh, many vendors will lower prices as competition becomes a more prominent factor in the industry. Uh, PC File R is our first attempt at what I would term an expensive uh, package. <laughs> Which is $150. $150. That's three times the price of anything I've ever sold before. <laughs> but in Paradox, we go for what, Steve? Its list price is $695. Okay, well, that's about the ballgame. Well, <laughs> despite the abundance of computers in the business workplace, one place you still don't find very many computers is in the CEO's office. Why? Well, we asked our commentator, George Morrow, for his thoughts. CEOs don't use computers much. In fact, they've created a new class of machine, the credenza computer. It sits on the credenza, displaying a bar graph, and is otherwise unused. Visitors, however, get the impression that the machine is part of the CEO's activities. This is good and bad. Good for the store who sold the machine since it needs no maintenance, but bad because it reinforces the mistaken notion that computers should be at work in every nook and cranny of a business. Nothing could be farther from the truth. No one expects a CEO to use a typewriter or a calculating machine, and they would never litter his office. And computers are really just another office machine. However, since they can be programmed to do more than one task at a time, there has developed the notion that somehow they can think or improve the thinking of those who use them. In reality, computers let people make mistakes faster and get businesses in trouble quicker unless they're very carefully used. The fact that CEOs don't use computers may be a sign that American business is not in as bad a shape as the trade deficit would otherwise indicate. That's how I see it. I'm George Morrow. random access file this week, Eastman Kodak has announced a new floppy disk drive with the capacity of a hard disk. Kodak's new drive is a five and a quarter inch drive with the floppy disk encased in a plastic cartridge. The floppy has a capacity of 10 megabytes of formatted storage. Kodak is also introducing a five megabyte drive using standard floppies made by its subsidiary verbatim. IBM has announced a freeze on new U.S. dealerships. Analysts said the move was designed to stem price cutting on IBM computers and to impede the growth of the gray market in PCs. There are now about 2,500 IBM dealerships in the country. Tandy has announced the newest in its line of MS-DOS computers, the Tandy 3000, an AT clone. Tandy says its AT will sell for under $4,000. The IBM AT goes for about $6,000. Tandy also says its Model 3000 will be faster than the AT and will come standard with a 20 megabyte hard drive. Lots of new product announcements this past week at Comdex, the annual computer show in Las Vegas. There were fewer exhibitors this year than last, but still more than 80,000 people turned up for the show. 
The biggest booth belonged to IBM. The biggest no-show was Lotus. In our legislative update file, a House subcommittee has reported out a new computer security bill aimed at adding existing wiretap protections to data transmissions, and two versions of a government computer security bill have moved out of committee to the House floor. Those bills seek to provide federal agency authorization to protect the security of the government's computer files. The Internal Revenue Service says it's ready for the new tax season. The IRS has added 20 new computers, rewritten its software, and retrained its personnel in an effort to avoid the computer fiasco of this past year. Another move by the IRS may be the biggest shot in the arm yet to the lap portable market. The IRS says it will soon buy $36 million worth of lap portables for its field auditors. No decision on which portables the IRS will buy. Time for this week's software pick, and here's our reviewer, Paul Schindler. You know, some people are going to use one of these to look for Halley's Comet, but the rest of us are just going to have to try to peer into the sky for the big celestial event of 1986. If you want to see it early, though, it helps to have a sky chart. But sky charts have a problem. They really only show you roughly where celestial bodies are in the sky. Wouldn't it be nice if there was some way to obtain a sky chart that showed just what the sky looked like above your house? Well, as you've probably guessed, I know how to get a chart like that by using a package called PC Planetarium. Now, first it asks you for your latitude and longitude. If you don't know them, it draws a globe and asks you to point to your location. Note that the screen is colorful and the instructions are simple and easy to follow. When you complete a task, PC Planetarium says thank you, an often overlooked but pleasant touch. Then it asks for the time and date of your sky chart and what time zone you're in. Obviously, ready for 1986, the program points out Halley's Comet, as well as other celestial bodies and constellations. PC Planetarium is slow as the Dickens. It takes 15 minutes to draw a screen and 20 minutes to print it. But heck, how often do you need a sky chart? PC Planetarium is $52 from Light Software in San Francisco. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Dragon Systems of Massachusetts says it has developed a new software program that significantly enhances the ability of existing speech recognition programs. Dragon says its new system can recognize 2,000 words at a speed of 25 words per minute. Dragon developers say that essentially would allow someone to dictate correspondence directly to a computer. While President Reagan was talking to Mr. Gorbachev in Geneva last week, some computer hackers were holding their own summit online. Joel Schatz of Berkeley conducted the first ever computer conference with a fellow hacker in Moscow. The online conference was initiated by ARC Communications using a computer network based at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Finally, a new software program does for computers what Dr. Ruth does for television. It gives you sex advice on your PC. The program tests you, then gives you an analysis of your sexual attitudes and your likely compatibility with a particular partner. The program is called IntraCourse. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by grants from AFIPS, the American Federation of Information Processing Societies, a nonprofit federation of 11 national societies for computer professionals. AFIPS, leadership and service in computer and information technology. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover the latest in microcomputer technology worldwide. Byte, the international standard.